It all starts with a dream. Did you know that God has a dream? God's own dream is his project, his kingdom, and our being included in it. One writer says that the kingdom of God is God's own dream. He makes us dreamers, and he wants us to be taken with, captivated and captured by, enchanted by his dream, and to dream it with him. It's not we who dream, but God who dreams in us. I hope you find that beautiful. We often hear the phrase, get a life. What about have a dream? Just make sure that you are on the same page with the one who made you. Think of the most beautiful thing you've ever seen and imagine yourself there. And so I would encourage you to have a kingdom dream. What would you like to do most? Ride a dolphin, visit New Zealand, Antarctica, go to the bottom of the sea or visit the Galapagos turtles on their island home. God says, by my great power, I have made the earth and all its people and every animal. I can give these things of mine to whomever I choose. He didn't make this awesome universe just for himself. Do you know that we love to marvel at things? As human beings, we love to be dazzled. We delight in telling our friends about the fantastic things we've seen or eaten or done. We absolutely love the words cool and awesome, probably the most overused words in the English language. And speaking of marveling and of overused words, I'm going to just take a little detour here. You all know what is the most popular expression when we are surprised or shocked or startled, or it's even commonplace now. It's the OMG expression. I don't even want to say it. It's universal, it's predictable. It's so sure that you could almost bet on it. I am always tempted to ask when I hear it, is that the one God of the universe you're referring to? As Christians, the OMG expression misses the mark in so many ways. It makes us a part of the world. It may be offensive to those who love God, and it appears to contradict the very prayer Jesus taught us to pray. The Lord's Prayer, as it's called. Although the Lord's Prayer features in our memories, it often does not feature in our behavior or in our thinking or in our language. Let's just think about this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And the name of God includes everything about God, his character and even his kingdom. By the way, all of Jesus' prayers are addressed to his Father. And we are told, we are told in Exodus 27, not to take the name of the Lord our God in vain, and I think it will help if we remember that we are to be holy people, as in Exodus 22. Ecclesiastes tells us not to let our mouths lead us into sin. And in Colossians 4, 6, we are told to let our speech always be gracious. Since I cannot imagine Jesus ever saying the, oh my God, expression, I have disciplined myself not to say it even though nine-tenths of the world does. We're supposed to sound like Jesus. It's a far cry, I think, from the beautiful Our Father to the OMG expression. And practically speaking, let me just say this. This is a tip, an ex a bonus tip to avoid swearing. I would suggest that you come up with an alternative for those moments when you stub your toe or hammer your thumb, because we know what might be likely to fly out of your mouth. Are we all so dumbed down that we cannot think of anything else to say besides swearing? Personally, when I am stabbed by a rose bush, when I've done nothing to that rose bush, I'm stabbed by a rose bush or I fall over a log, I will say something nonsensical like horse feathers. Be creative and come up with your own substitute so that you won't resort to vile speech. Back to our subject. Young people are natural worshipers. It's a matter of what you worship. In a way, 
you could say that we were made for worship. We almost do it naturally. Sometimes, though, we can get it wrong. If we follow the fads and the fashions and the customs that are popular, we will most likely get it wrong. And with worship, we have to do it right. Our worship must be truthful. And we actually have a tendency to do it wrong. Our worship must be truthful. The, the tendency to do it wrong will be by copying or being influenced by those around us. God's words, you know, did not sink in with the people that he chose to have fellowship with. In Exodus, he said repeatedly, these were his rules, no other gods and no idols. No other gods and no idols. He, these same warnings were repeated again and again. But tragically, there was even a time when the people of God actually melted their gold earrings so as to provide the gold for the statue of a calf. And then they worshipped that calf even though they knew it was just made out of their gold jewelry. Not only do idols get in the way, they misdirect us. And this idol caused God's people to sin big time. Anything can be an idol. Those magic machines might be what we think of first because they're so time consuming and so addictive. But anything, personal appearance, physical appearance, approval by others, popularity, cars, movie stars, singing groups, food, anything, anything can be an idol. And God knew full well that what occupies your time, you would eventually worship. Whatever or whoever commands most of your attention becomes your idol. It might be helpful to ask yourself this. What do you think about when your mind is in neutral? And secondly, what do you do during your idle moments? And thirdly, if you're brave enough, have an objective observer of your life conclude what is your God by observing you over the past week. Remember, anything can be an idol and idols get in the way. They prevent us from seeing straight. Our hearts are just like the hearts of the Israelites who constantly wandered away from. We need to aim just like an archer would for the bullseye. If our aim is to please and find the approval of father and son, I believe we can hit the mark. There is a solution for us and a proven way to avoid idols. And that solution is to imitate Jesus. We can't go wrong in doing that. It says in 3 John 11, Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but imitate what is good. And in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, Paul says, I appeal to you then, be imitators of me. And he explains then in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. And we know that the Thessalonians were commended for imitating Paul, who imitates God, 1 Thessalonians 1, 6. And remember that God said that he would give the whole earth to Jesus, and Jesus said he would share it with us. We've been given the most astonishing privilege of being invited to call God our Father or Abba, dear Father. Invest some time in dreaming a kingdom dream with God.